Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to do a quick update video on the Caracal EF pistol. This past winter, I picked one of these guns up from my local gun shop, spur of the moment purchase, and I picked up the version with the quick sights. The quick sights have the front sight right here and the rear sight right here next to my index finger. They also offer a standard model that has a traditional three dot sight arrangement with the front sight right where my index finger is. And then of course, where you'd expect the rear dot sight or the rear sight right here that's two dots where my index finger is. So when I got this pistol, it was pretty much the dead of winter when we're out shooting the handgun. We had some trigger reset issues in the bitter cold. So I contacted Caracal, they immediately took care of me, they took the gun back in, they called me up and said, yep, when we got the shipment in, it just right off the UPS truck, the gun was bitter cold because it was cold where they were at as well. And uh, the gun had reset issues until it reached room temperature and then the reset issues went away, which is the exact same problem I was having with the gun. So they took the gun apart and they discovered there's just a little tiny burr on the trigger dingus, this inertial safety that Glock made popular, the Caracal also has. And it just seems that the lubrication or whatever that I had on the gun in conjunction with that burr was causing the gun not to function properly. So I've had the gun back now for a little while and I have fired it in the, in the bitter cold and the reset issues are gone. So it just seems it was a, a fluke with that one particular gun coupled with the little tiny burr that probably worked, would have worked itself out eventually, but put that in bitter cold conditions, a little bit of oil that turns solid, and boom, you have a malfunctioning pistol. That's how easy it is to take a normal, reliable handgun and turn it into an unreliable handgun, expose it to weird conditions. So anyway, I have the gun back, but since they sent this gun back to me with the quick sights, I had the opportunity to pick up another one. And this is the standard model, which has the more conventional sight system on it. So we have two dots in the rear and one dot in the front. So we have both pistols out here this afternoon. But I'm gonna start off shooting the quick sight pistol. I bought this one because I was really interested in the sighting system. Now, when the Caracals went off the market, we'll talk more about that later in the video, I had the standard sight model. And I sent my gun in and I never got it back. And I was kind of depressed, I wish I had kept it. And now knowing what I know about why they took them off the market, I really do wish I had kept it. But that's a moot point. So I, I was kind of, upset that I got the three dot sight system versus the quick sight when I made my original purchase. So that's why I jumped at the opportunity to have this one. So the quick sight system allows you to have a very sharp sight picture you don't normally have. Usually your sights are gonna be a little bit blurry because of the distance they are apart and then when you focus on the target down range. Here you can focus on the target down range and still have a very sharp, crisp sight picture. It's kind of weird how well it works, but it also gives you a much reduced sight uh, sight radius, which a lot of folks complain about. Now, I've seen people shoot this extremely well. Me, I'm still learning the system. I will always fall back to a three-dot sight system, but I'm trying to give this quick sight system a chance here. So let's go ahead and shoot the gun for you guys. We're shooting some 124 grain Freedom Ball. I'm sorry, this is actually an American Eagle Ball from Federal, but we did pick it up from our friends over at Freedom Munitions. There is a discount code down below for 6% off. All right, let's see how well this gun shoots. I haven't shot it here in a couple of months. I love that sight picture, that's nice. All right, so it didn't lock open on that last shot fired, and that's typically because of me and how I hold pistols. I hold them like this, and my thumb rides right on the slide stop slide release. That's something I'm just gonna have to get used to with the pistol. So shooting center of mass with the quick sight system, and you may have counted, there are 18 rounds in what looks like would normally be perhaps a 15 round magazine. It's conventional sized, but it actually holds 18 rounds in a duty sized grip. That's kind of nice because with my CZs, when I carry my 18 round magazines, I have about an inch of floor plate sticking off to get to the 18 round count. This is really nice. Now you have a slide stop over here um, and a slide release. However, you don't have that on the right hand side of the pistol for left handed shooters. However, for left handed shooters, the mag release works from either the right hand or the left hand. All right, that's one thing I've noticed about the pistols. You kind of have to shake the magazines out of them. So either have to strip them out or flip them out if you want to do a quick magazine change. Even then I can't really flip it out, so it's kind of a stripper clip. <laughs> Except this isn't a clip, it's a magazine. Mm -hmm. 
This is the gun with a more traditional sighting arrangement. This is more like the one that I, I returned, hoping I would get back, but uh, didn't. Now they did refund the money to those customers that had purchased the pistols, and then they were recalled. They re refunded the full market price of the handgun to those customers, so we were compensated, but I really kind of missed the gun. But we'll talk more about why it was taken off the market here again later in the video. So this little guy has a more traditional sight set up. You know, we have the three dot sights, have two dots here in the rear, one dot in the front. It has very aggressive slide serrations, very easy to get a hold of, both front and rear. If you're one of those guys that like to, likes to do the press check thing, you'll have your uh, serrations up front. I don't really care so much about those, but I have nice positive slide serrations back here at the rear. And uh, the gun sets nice and low in the hand. It feels really good. It feels more ergonomic than a Glock by far, and I love the fact that, again, it holds 18 rounds in the magazine. So let's see if this little guy shoots to the same point of aim as the quick sight gun. Look at that, guys. So we had a failure to extract and eject. So we'll just tap, get back out. Now what I will notice with this particular handgun is the ejection is all over the place. I wasn't seeing that with my quick sight gun. This one's throwing them up and some of them are coming down on the bill of my cap. It's almost like they're throwing them up and coming back down into the action. Let's try another magazine. That one I could shake out pretty readily. And look at that, guys. That is a failure to, I don't even know what, it's like stuck on the ejector. So we've had a couple of malfunctions with the gun with the regular sight arrangement here. So we're gonna run a few magazines through it and see if we can uh, repeat those malfunctions. The last one where the cartridge was just laying on the magazine, uh, I just shook that right out of the gun. It's like the extractor is not holding on to the spent case. Yeah, this thing definitely has a problem with its extractor. I don't know if it's broken, but you can see there's a spent case in the chamber and it just tried to feed around behind it. That's just something that's a, a new development, guys, because I have shot this gun before. So the extractor is in place. I can see that it's there. It's not broken. I don't know if Jason can get in tight enough. The extractor, if I turn here into the sunlight, is right here by my index finger but um, it's there, and it's a rather large surface area for an extractor, but um, yeah, I think we're just gonna go ahead and put this gun away, and we're gonna have to send this thing back to Caracal and have them take a look at the extractor. Tell you what, that really sucks. Hmm, let's shoot the QF pistol, I, or, I'm sorry, the quick sight pistol. Let's see if it has any problems. I hope it doesn't, Jeez, now I'm kind of worried. All right, so let's see if the gun they already repaired, which was kind of a minor problem compared to the extractor problem I'm having with the other gun. Let's see how well this thing runs. I think I have four or five magazines in my pocket. Let's see if we have any failures to uh, extract or eject or feed or anything like that. Now the the ejection on this pistol seems to be more consistent. I noticed the ejection pattern on the other pistol was all over the place before the extractor finally completely went kaputs on this. All right, this one, the other gun the magazines drop freely on, this one I have to shake them or pull them out.
and we're shooting the heck out of the center of the target at about 15 yards and no issues with my quick sight pistol. I'm still using the quick sight version of the handgun because you're having problems with the extractor on the other handgun. I'm gonna put another five 18 round magazines through this gun just to check functionality, make sure that it's still working solidly. Magazines stick in there just a little bit. The ejection pattern is very consistent on this gun. And the exact same problem, guys. Now, we didn't bring out any other types of ammo. We might have to do a follow-up video to this follow-up video. But this is Federal 124 Green Red Box American Eagle stuff. And uh, I've never had these types of problems with American Eagle before. This is the same lot of ammo we've pretty much been using this last two, three months. Hmm. All right, last magazine. There's definitely something going on there. We had one malfunction out of five rounds, or I'm sorry, out of five magazines with 18 rounds. Uh, and that's the first malfunction I've had out of this handgun since getting it back from Caracal several months ago. Pretty interesting. Hmm. I wonder what could be going on. Only other thing I can think of is to try it again later with some different ammunition. So I've taken the quick sight pistol and wiped it down with some rim oil wipes here. You can see the dirty one. It shouldn't really make that much of a difference. These guns are typically kept fairly clean. Here's the ammunition that we're using, the American Eagle 124 grain ammunition you've seen in many, many videos. I run this out of everything from Lugers to modern pistols, and I never have any problems with it. So I got another 90 rounds loaded. There's five magazines with 18 rounds in them, and let's just see what happens with the pistol now, see if we have even a, a single malfunction after wiping it down with rim oil. Trigger finger's getting a little bit tired. All right, that's it. Ran five magazines out of it after wiping everything down with the rim oil. And like I said, that's the first time I've ever seen this particular gun have that type of a failure. Maybe ammo related, so we'll try the other gun in another video. We'll do an update to this update video and let you guys know. But so far, this one seems to be working okay. We just put another 90 rounds through it. I'm going to load up these magazines a couple more times before we go home this afternoon. But I also want to share that story with you about why the Caracals were taken off the market in the first place. The story behind the recall of the original series of pistols is based upon, and this is what's been explained to me by the company, the fact that the ownership of the company, which is based in the United Arab Emirates, a country called Abu Dhabi, uh, they were very reluctant to come to the U.S. market to begin with. They were worried about litigation lawsuits and things like that because our country kind of is known for suing people over things like cups of hot coffee that get spilt. So they were a little bit nervous and apprehensive to come into the U.S. market. Well, they introduced the pistols into the U.S. market, and sure enough, they had one guy report that his gun fired when it was dropped and it discharged. And I don't think anybody was wounded, but he made that claim to Caracal, who immediately had something of a knee-jerk reaction and pulled all the guns from the U.S. market and planned to leave the U.S. market in its entirety. And so they issued a refund 
at full market price to all the owners that turned the guns in, and boom, they were gone. It took several years before Caracal USA set up operations here and started uh, bringing the guns back to the U.S. market. So that's the story behind the initial recall. Now, they said that they really didn't change much between the current pistols and the pistol that was reported to have had a drop safety issue. Now, these guns are used all over the world, all over Europe. I guess they're used by many different police departments in other countries. And so they've never really had a problem with that or had a reported issue of a gun discharging when dropped. So there is very little, from what I'm told, changes done to the current generation of guns that are on the U.S. market as compared to the gun that actually caused the guns to be pulled from the market in the first place. I'm sure there's some minor design changes, but they didn't tell me what those design changes were. All right, now I have another 90 rounds. This should put us pretty close to 300 rounds to this particular pistol with the quick sights. And so far we've only had one malfunction, but that's one malfunction too many. Let's see if we can get through another 90 rounds here with no problems. Magazines still don't quite drop free. I will say that the rim oil that we put on the gun is pretty much burned off. Rim oil doesn't stick around very long when the guns start to get hot. And two more magazines left. Trigger finger is getting tired, I'm like squeezing my whole hand again. It reminds me of my thousand rounds in 14 minutes video. All right, no malfunction. So we've got well, just a little over 300 rounds to this particular gun. We had that one failure to extract. With the other pistol, it seemed to be happening every magazine. So I'm definitely going to send the other pistol back to Caracal, whose service has been good in the past, and see if they can get that gun fixed for me and let me know what the problem was. With this gun, I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to continue to run Federal, and I'm going to run some free munitions through it and some of the other 9mm ammo that I typically use here on the channel that's never given me problems before, and make sure that that just wasn't a cork with this handgun. Well, there you guys have it. There's a quick update to the status of the Caracal EF pistol. It looks like I owe you guys one more update. With my quick sight version, I'm going to keep my hands on this one. I'm not going to send it in for service. I've only had that one malfunction, and, uh, and we got over 300 rounds to this handgun today and just had that one malfunction. Now, with the other gun, we were having those malfunctions with the Federal ammunition pretty much every magazine, sometimes multiple times per magazine, and that's a little bit concerning. So I'm going to send that back to Caracal. Their customer service has been good so far, but I owe you guys, again, one more update. So I'll do that later this summer. It's just starting to get warm out here. Plus, that means the gauntlet tests are getting ready to spin up because we're almost to the proper weather temperatures so we can run those tests. If you guys would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. Over at Patreon, you can directly support us. We've been demonetized on YouTube, and our viewers are the people that support us, and we're 100% viewer supported so you can uh, swing by and check us out over at patreon.com forward slash military arms another way you can support us is to swing by forge from freedom which is our t-shirt store we sell patches and t-shirts and all sorts of cool stuff there i'll put a link to that down below which is forgefromfreedom.com and then select the military arms collection also please swing by and check us out at copper custom which is coppercustom.com and that's our online store and finally Swing by and check us out over at Full30.com. That's where freedom rings, and we're having all sorts of problems with YouTube where they're not only demonetizing us, but now threatening to kick many, if not all, gun channels off at some point in the future. They just changed their policies, and we're already seeing some of the smaller channels getting the boot from YouTube. So we're all running over to Full30.com. All right, guys, I'm going to put a last magazine through this Caracal, and then I will see you hopefully in the next couple of months with another update video and show you these two pistols hopefully working 100%. Thanks for 10 years of watching us, guys. This is our 10th year anniversary, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Hmm. Just that one hiccup still bothers me a little bit, but what the heck. Got one more magazine.
Dang it, guys, the last magazine of the video, we're just about to close it out, and I get a second malfunction. Oh. I may have to send this one back too, dang it. And now it's doing it every time. Is it a heat thing? I don't know. Never had these problems with Federal before. Don't know what to tell you guys. You'll see these guns again in a future video. I always tell you guys that when you watch a YouTube video, be it mine or anybody else's, that uh, you're usually seeing a sample set of one. Now we have two Caracal pistols out here today, and they, uh, they're two different models, although they're really the same pistol, sans the sight arrangement. But the only thing that we don't have a different sample set of is the ammunition. We're using American Eagle 124 grain ammo, which is considered to be good quality ammo. We've never had problems with it before. Here's some of the ammo that we fired this afternoon, literally a half a case of ammo. Now we have a sample set of two firearms with this American Eagle ammo that's never given me problems, even in my Luger pistols or P38s or my older style handguns, all the way up to my current carry guns. I've used this stuff for years and never had a problem with it, and this exact same lot. So now we have two pistols that are having problems with this ammo. Can it be ammo related, the problems that we experienced in this video? Absolutely it could be. So we will have to try the guns with some different ammunition. but. The failures that I'm seeing seem to be related to the extractor. So here we have a sample set of two. Does it mean that the guns are bad as a whole? I don't think so. It may be ammo related, but I just wanted to make that clear, guys. Um, it's kind of awkward that we'd see two guns having the same type of failures this afternoon as we have today. So I'm not condemning the pistols. I'm just saying that we do definitely need to try some different ammunition, but I'm a little bit concerned given the quality of the ammunition that we've used in the production of this video today.